Everything is on the spill because we are on water. That's she talked me into fishing. You know, and we're lucky. We're so, we're so lucky. Every island in Belize is unique, and Haidewaki is no exception. This private key is entirely covered by mangrove trees and owned by Kim and Dustin, an American couple living completely off the grid. Everything is on the because we are on water. Unlike all the other keys, everything is built on stilts do not disturb the original ecosystem. There is no sand, which means that there are no mosquitoes nor sand flies. The breathing tubes are called nematophores. That's the way that they take in, in air, whereas like a normal tree would have roots that go into the ground. Walkways that wind through the original mangroves give you a perfect opportunity to admire the beautiful fauna and flora. The island is full of red and black mangroves, iguanas and hummingbirds. I was like, that's easy, and then I heard, room. <laughs> they have one cabana for guests, a house for themselves, and a thatched roof open air bar and restaurant, which was built with help of the local Mennonites and Mayans. Hey buddy. Didn't I tell you to go? He's like humans. I like humans. He's like I'm never out for people. breakfast. <laughs> Passing sailors are welcome to enjoy drinks and delicious home cooked food with a side of the incredible stories by Kim, Dustin, and their daughter. Wow, what a story. The course is set north for San Pedro. We have 65 nautical miles ahead of us, which means a full day of sailing. When sailing within the second biggest coral reef in the world, you're hardly getting any wind. We got uh, three knots, so this is gonna be a little slow. So. No, it's it's only this it's only this mile, one mile that we have to be like this, and then we're gonna change the direction a little bit more. Okay. And that that means. Uh, I think we are not in a rush. We're gonna uh, gain like another okay. one knot, so four. I think there's it's gonna be four knots. Now there's two knots. <laughs> and in a the mile, there's gonna be four knots. <laughs> I think it's okay. I think so too. Through the valley I may walk, but you were all I'll ever need. Gave you life to take my fall, so in the storm I will have peace. Ready? Yep. What's so our feet? The storm,
down to guide me Cause I am yours and I am free And when it seems I'm at the end I don't know what I believe Through the cloud I see your head How do you feel? be a couple more patches so I just have to be alert and uh, in less than uh, one mile I guess we're gonna be out of it he's always nervous when we sail he doesn't eat and then he's surprised that I'm hungry eight hours of sailing and he survives on peanuts We are behind the barrier reef, which is probably where that little island is. And the water is so calm, even though it's blowing about 15 knots, which is perfect by the way. Um, it sounds unbelievable, you know. To go to San Pedro, we have to cross a section called a 12 foot bank, then get into the English K channel through which we'll cross the reef and sail into the deep open waters all the way to San Pedro. We decided to do a little bit of fishing, so... No, no, no. That she talked me into fishing. We have five hours to reach San Pedro. Dan was predicting uh, that it will be quite a bumpy ride. But it's actually going pretty nicely. It's wavy. Again, not too bad. So it's pleasant. I took my sickness pill anyway. We just realized that I have a happy life because I imagine having a happy life and Gabika has a happy life when she eats. <laughs> yeah, we all have different priorities, you know, and uh, beautiful. Um, the, this is the, fish, gonna be the fish are gonna love it. So yesterday morning we woke up in uh, King Louis. We spent three days there. For me it was like a vacation, it was amazing because before that, we were in Placencia, the weather was bad for five days, we had some adventures. <sighs> what just happened? So, we just dragged. The boat has dragged. Now we've been at this anchorage for five days or so and everything was good so we went out for uh, uh, some snack and, and drink and all of a sudden it started being windy and uh, uh, we come back cook some food and I'm like you know what it is kind of windy it was I'm gonna turn on my anchor application all of a sudden it starts beeping so I'm like you know what that's not cool I go and then our boat, the, the boat that's behind us is very close at this point. So I'm like, yeah, fuck, we're dragging. So I had to Pull up start the engine. the engine. I'm hoping that the engine is going to start because I need to have the engine started for the uh, chain to go up, right? And Gabby goes uh, to the front and, and watches and, and showing me where the anchor is but the anchor is dragging at this point so I'm pulling it up but as soon as I pull it up a meter or two the device the, the controller stops and resets and it was too much too much pressure for it. it was not getting enough juice uh, so I have the engine cranked 
and you know at that point we were passing by a catamaran no? and two people just standing looking at us and I felt like we were like it was a theater play you know like yeah all, yeah. all the boats had like one or two people on it right. and they were all just like staring like what are these two doing yeah and, and here's <laughs> here's us here's us you know dragging this way and here's one boat second boat third boat fourth boat so as I'm pulling up the anchor right I'm going with the boat forward and back and to the side I have my uh, uh, thrusters uh, on so I'm like blasting uh, uh, the they thrusters are look, they, are, they are like yeah well like what's going on yeah and actually a couple of guys came to check on us on the dinghy because because we took ages to pull up the anchor right yeah I because of this error yeah. I couldn't pull it up it was restarting all the time and finally you know you pull up the anchor and the guys come in, you know, check if we're okay. And at that time, you know, my anchor was out, so I had full control over the boat. Uh, so I just, you know, told them, yeah, it's good. It went off. Uh, I looked for a more shallow area um, and re anchored again. And right now, we're good. It's fine, yeah. We just opened all the curtains, you know, to see the boat. We usually have it closed, but now we want to observe. We have uh, one. Points that we are checking yeah, yeah, and it seems it fine, yeah. but um, yeah, it's very windy. And I felt like at least a couple more boats were working. Yeah, you know, and we're lucky. We're so, we're so lucky because uh, we were out during the day, and it was day. If this was night, we'd be sleeping, and I would never set the anchor. Uh, Is it okay, looking? You think we're not gonna drift anymore? <laughs> Whenever it's uh, really bad weather, I wanna leave the dinghy further out. Okay. I yep. mean, it's crazy. It's like adrenaline, right? You know? Total adrenaline. It's OMG. Yeah. Well, cool. Let's finish the dinner. Yep. It was a nice relief and kind of um, uh, vacation, if you will, for us for three days on King Louis. We have 33 nautical miles left. Yeah. Things are looking good and we're gonna do some fishing. I'll guide you through it. Thanks a million for watching and make sure to subscribe. There are so many fish here. And we haven't got any yet, shame on us. But we almost hit a fisherman. Yeah, we over saw a fisherman. Let's cut that out of this video. <laughs>